well-known outrageous style of humour, which may include language that some viewers may find offensive. Thank you very much and good evening. Uh, we are fast approaching a period of the year when the holiday brochures will be dropping into your house by the bucketful. Have you ever listened to them come in? <laughs> Sounds exactly like a cow shitting through your letterbox. <laughs> They're always the same, aren't they? They always have the sun, the setting sun. I'm sure it's the one setting sun. No matter where you go in the world, it's the one setting sun. I've seen it all over the place. There's a church, there's a fat flamenco dancer <laughs> with the castanets of the ready. Black hair and big tits and a huge <laughs> belly. And a toothless cretin with a guitar standing beside her. <laughs> There's always pictures of hotels and villas and condominiums, pools, lush pools, swimming pools, surrounded by the lovely people, decorating them. You've seen it, they're all <laughs> drinking, laughing, smiling. All young, you've never seen an oldie there, have you? You've never seen an old one there? <laughs> You don't see any varicose veins, pot bellies, ball hats, drooping tubes around. Them. <laughs> Have you ever looked at that young? There's no, there's no, there's no fat on. There's not an ounce of fat. There's not a stretch mark. There's not one lump of cellulite between the lot of them. They're all sitting there, all, all happy and wonderful. The Coast Guard. You see the Coast Guard? Bronze, the Donna's figure, about to kid, give the kiss of life to a pair of smiling breasts. <laughs> and there's always that miserable old lady, that black clad lady on a donkey, <laughs> octogenarian on her way to the market. What is she bloody buying? Poison for Christ's sake? <laughs> and the chef, the friendly chef, with the morning catch of salmonella and botulism. <laughs> Have you seen those bastards? They're always hairy, have you noticed that? They always have a hat and a red handkerchief and a vest and hair right down their arms and up on the inside of their arms. I don't know whether it's coming from the hand up or the armpit down. <laughs> but he's a chef for Christ's sake. <laughs> it's an extraordinary images that they, they, they keep on Crete. Greek islands, there's always the happy taverna. People pouring down. Uzo! Uzo! You never see a local drink that shit, do you? They're all drinking scotch and water and porter from Ireland. Picture of them throwing down the Uzo. What it should be is a picture of them throwing up the Uzo. And this madness we have to get in the sun. They all do it. 50 years of the week. 50 weeks. 50 years of the week. That was quick, wasn't it? 50 weeks in a year, we keep our body under wraps. Two weeks, we go out. Woof! We're into it. The sun. Not for five or 10 or 15 minutes, which is sensible. Hours! We sit there in the sun. Not only we sit in it, we cover ourselves with oil. You can hear people sizzling. You can pop the blister. Here comes another one. Surfing. What about that? Windsurf. What sort of a crap exercise is that? <laughs> Eight hours in the sea, endeavouring to try to climb onto a capsized board with a sail and... Jesus! I broke my nails. I was red raw. I came out looking like a lobster that's had a kind of nervous breakdown. <laughs> and water ski. I'm a niece. Somebody takes water ski. So I get in the water. 
my little jacket on, put my feet in these skis, lie on your back, hold the rope, and off we go. And he goes, I cannot get up. I am down like this. And he's doing 40 miles around the Bay of Biscay with my arse in the water. My anus is doing a filter job for the Mediterranean. Forty mile an hour anema. <laughs> and I'm thinking, are we mad? What? And people said, what about a bungee jump? <laughs> what? This is a bungee jump. I said, what's a bungee jump? I don't know what a bungee jump was. And I said, well, you climb up to the top of this tower, it's about 120, 150 feet high, put a rubber rope around you, and you just dive off. <laughs> I said, is this compulsory? Oh, you're mine. <laughs> Can you imagine the G you go through when you hit the bottom? There's about eight pounds of blood in your head. Your eyes are coming. <laughs> You'd certainly crap yourself on the way down, wouldn't you? How do you pass that crap coming down on the way up? There's a, there's a kind of image we have of ourselves, too. You go on a holiday. You see yourself as you see the brochure. When I go abroad and I'm walking down the beach, I don't see myself as a middle-aged, grey-haired old wrinkly. <laughs> I see myself as Mr. Cool. <laughs> yeah, or bronze. Uh. And I'm thinking somewhere out here, there's a female who wants this body. I go to the discotheque with that strobe lighting, UV lighting, have too much to drink, and I find her, this little creature in blue, and we dance the night, and I wake up in this room in the morning, and I have no idea where I am. And I'm looking at the ceiling, trying to figure it out. And I'm thinking, what did I do last night? And then it all comes flooding back. You picked up that dolly little bird in the disco. And I turn over and the first thing I see is a set of teeth in a glass. <laughs> and I recognize her immediately. She's the black clad octogenarian old lady on the way to the market. And I'm lying there thinking, Jesus, did I do it? <laughs> oh, Christ, did I? Oh, I did, didn't I? I did, I remember doing it. And then I think, at least I put a condom on, I did that. <laughs> and as I got out of bed, I saw it on my toe. <laughs> spiders, in, I mean, there's spiders everywhere out there, waiting to get you. Trapdoor spiders, they're in the trees, they're in funnels, they're everywhere. And females have this extraordinary approach with spiders. Females see a spider in a bath, they always wash it down. <laughs> Water and shower cap. <laughs> down the plug it goes. Then they fill the bath up and they have a bath. Let me tell you about spiders. They're covered in millions of little minute hairs. And every one of those hairs manages to capture, if there's any air in the water at all, the little bubbles. And they just float up. They're in the overflow. <laughs> That's where they are. You're having a bath. Mm -hmm. They're behind. <laughs> and the thing, I mean, holiday, mosquitoes. They're everywhere, those bastards. And we, we think we take precautions. We have, we, we burn things all night. Little things that burn throughout the night. Circles of burning. We plug in things that guarantee to keep mosquitoes out for 12 hours. You spray yourself. 
Dreams, lotions spread all over you. You sit there in the dark like a tart in a brothel. <laughs> and you hear it. <laughs> and one of those little bastards that got through all your defenses. He's a little kamikaze pilot. He's made it. <laughs> and you're sitting there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know the bastard's gonna get you. <laughs> and they cut off like a doodlebug. <laughs> Stop. Oh, shit. Where is it? <laughs> walls like a mad dervisher on speed. <laughs> and they get you, they get you everywhere. They get you on the knuckles, get you on the earlobes, get you cheekbones, elbows, feet, ankles. They get you in an inaccessible place. They always get you on the back where you can't get it. <laughs> oh, oh, in between your toenails. <laughs> The cheeks of your bum. <laughs> I was actually bitten on a scrotum. <laughs> on a scrotum, for Christ's sake. It's perfectly acceptable for people to scratch their knuckles. <laughs> the cheekbones, the back, the bum. <laughs> I'm waiting to be seated in a restaurant. There's about 200 people there. <laughs> I can't stop myself. Oh, 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 oh. And you see people looking at you. Go, oh, oh, oh. You get embarrassed. What you should say? Listen, all right. It's not crabs. I don't have crabs. I don't have to clap. I got bitten by one of those bastard mosquitoes. All right. And people say, "Does it?" Have you noticed with people who never get bitten by mosquitoes? They always say, "Don't scratch it." Don't scratch it. We'll make it worse. They say, slap. <laughs> so slap numbs the area. You don't scratch it and take the top off it. Like a septic, slap it. What if you got bitten on the dick? <laughs> That'd take some explaining, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're in the bathroom battering your dong with a newspaper. Walks in. What are you doing, darling? <laughs> when I fly, I don't want to care about wide seats, short seats, reclining seats how much booze they're going to give me, what food I'm getting. When I fly, three things I want to know. Will the plane take off? <laughs> when, it, when it's up in the air, will it stay in the air? <laughs> and when it comes down, is it coming down where they said it would come down? <laughs> That's all I want to know. <laughs> Get on airplanes. Good. The language. The language of airlines. Planes are never late. Have you never said? They're delayed. <laughs> you get on the when they, the tape, and there's always, you see, there's always these words that they use. Words are very important, the psychological wording. You get on an airplane, sitting on the runway, ready to take off. That's when the hostess always tells you about the things that can go wrong with the plane. <laughs> They never tell you that when you're buying the ticket, do they? <laughs> they never say, the wings could fall out, or oxygen will fail, none of that. They wait until you're sitting there. Not only are you sitting there, but you're strapped. <laughs> you're strapped into this bloody thing. And then under the guise of talking about the doors, they're giving you a blessing. Do you know? I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, 
and use words of uh, if by chance, if by chance, the pressurization of the cabin drops, oxygen will be provided. <laughs> That's bloody nice of them, isn't it? <laughs> They've got you up to 35,000 feet. They're about to asphyxiate you. <laughs> no, we'll give you some oxygen. <laughs> and it's all that oxygen will be provided. If an oxygen mask drops down in front of you, please place it over your nose and mouth and breathe. <laughs> Where else, for Christ's sake? <laughs> That's the only part of your body you can breathe through. You're not going to stick it on your arse. <laughs> <laughs> and breathe normally. Normally. Can you see yourself 35,000 feet? And these things drop out of the roof like used contraceptive. <laughs> and you're going to go, oh, look at that. Oh, that's interesting. The pressurization of the cabin must have dropped. They're providing us with oxygen. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very interesting, is it? Yes. <laughs> Crap. Let me tell you, if you're sitting there at 35,000 feet and those things drop down in front of you, the first thing that happens is your anal nerve goes. <laughs> jumbo jet that is 500 anal nerves. <laughs> so the quicker the thing you get that thing over your nose, the better. <laughs> Words like emergency landing. Have you come across that? Emergency landing. Emergency landing. It's clever wording. It's an emergency, but it's a landing. They've got you down. We're pros. It's an emergency. We've seen you through. We've got you down. You don't have to worry about things like that. <laughs> emergency. Somebody says emergency to me. Crash! <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Crash! <laughs> emergency landing. Hit, thump, wallop, bang, bump into. <laughs> We're about to make an emergency landing on the side of this mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely things like, make sure your safety belt is fastened. Can you see yourself going through all this? The plane is coming in. <laughs> your table is stowed. <laughs> Seat is in an upright position. <laughs> make sure that all the crockery and glass things you give to the hostess. Hostess, excuse me. <laughs> We're coming into the side of a mountain. Will you take my glass away from me? Please? Take your teeth out. <laughs> they don't say take your false teeth out, they say take your teeth out. <laughs> People sit there with spoons going. <laughs> place a pillow on your lap and place your head on the lap. You see that? Sitting there, coming into the side of a mountain with your head on your lap? That's so you can kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> Brace yourself. Brace yourself. <laughs> what did you do when you hit the mountain? I braced myself. That's what I did. <laughs> do you know that an airplane, after 18 hours of flying, is just filled with vomit, defecation, and farts? <laughs> that's all it is. It hits the side of a mountain. That's why nobody will go near it for days. <laughs> The un have you heard? If in the unlikely event of us having to put down on water, there's a double doubt there, isn't it? If unlikely, put the two. The if unlikely, put down on water. Put down. Put down. Leaves put down. Thistle down puts down. Feathers put down. Jumbo jets. Have you seen one? 
<laughs> it's as big as this theater, for Christ's sake. If I took this theater up to 35,000 feet and dropped it, it would not put down. <laughs> it would bury itself in the bloody ground. That's what it'd do. <laughs> if, in the unlikely event of us having to put down on water, you will find your life jacket under your seat. And then they show you how to put it on. You place it over your head, you take two ribbons, you circle the body once, tie it in the bow on the left-hand side, and they do it. <laughs> Can you see yourself coming out of the sky at 900 miles an hour? Have you seen the Indian Ocean? It's enormous. It's black and nasty and enormous. It's got waves, huge, gigantic waves following each other all around. And you look at your safety card and you have landed in the Indian Ocean. Your captain has managed to find a flat piece. <laughs> All little blue waves all around it, all pretty. <laughs> the yellow slides coming out of the side of the aeroplane. People going. <laughs> the dinghy with a bell tent. Children say, Mommy, we're going camping in the Indian Ocean. <laughs> you see pictures of the people leaving the aeroplane. <laughs> Some asshole with a briefcase. <laughs> Hostess is saying, thank you for flying, <laughs> The one thing you never see in all that is little black fins, do you? <laughs> you never look at those pictures and there's little black fins all floating around, is there? If you get in an airplane and you're looking at the safety card and it has black fins on it, I have been there before you. <laughs> That's what I do on airplanes now. I get the safety cards and I draw in little black fins. <laughs> I get a red ink and kind of put little bits of red in it. <laughs> and for your added safety, while you're in the Indian Ocean, they give you a whistle. <laughs> in the Indian Ocean? <laughs> Miles of nothing. Huge waves. <laughs> Plane, 40,000 feet. <laughs> you deaf bastard! <laughs> you know, the one thing I've always, always you hear about, but any sort of mishap with airplanes, the one thing that they always find, the only thing to get back is the flight recorder, don't they? The black box. They always get the black box back. It's waterproof, bomb proof, fireproof. It is totally indestructible. Now, why don't they put wings on it and let us fly it? You have, uh, you have been a delightful audience to talk to. Good night. Thank you. Oh.